In the last Ram Charger video, I got a little carried away cleaning the interior and I really didn't get anything else done. This receipt is from 1994. Since then, I got the new U-joints put back in the drive shaft and got the drive shaft installed. And this entire time, I've been gravity bleeding the brakes in hopes of getting a firmer brake pedal. I also got the dash put back together with new LEDs, so the dash is super bright. While I continue to gravity bleed the brakes today, what I'm going to do is start putting the passenger door together. I got a new window motor, new switch, and all the glass to put back in there. I've also got all new weather stripping for the passenger door as well as the driver door. I would be lying to you guys if I told you that I remembered how to put this door back together. The reality is, I couldn't remember. So what did I do? If you guessed tearing apart the driver door, well then you'd be correct. So tearing apart the driver window wasn't in complete vain. I went ahead and I learned how everything went back together for one and two, I changed the window motor and I put all new seals in the door. So that includes this seals right here, the two seals here, the seal running down the door divider as well, which was an absolute pain in the ass, but check this out. Dang, power windows on the 1980 Ram Charger. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that the glass actually sits on a window channel called a window sash. Now here's the old one, as you can see, it's rusted and old, but what goes in here in the middle, um, it's actually some kind of felt or some kind of rubber that holds the glass in place. So when it pulls the window down, it all stays in place. So that was so dry rotted that I thought I needed to order replacement window sash channels, which is again what this is. So I ordered new sash channels only to find out that they don't have, they don't have a seal. So I still have the same problem. And that problem being that when the window goes down, the sash channel goes down, but the window stays up in the new seals. And the last thing you want is that glass to fall down and then shatter in a door or something crazy like that. So I had to order some some window tape is what they call it, some sash channel tape. And I've got a bunch of samples because I really don't know what size I need for this one, or I might have to go back in with the old ones and do that as well. So in the meantime, I'm gonna put together the passenger door as much as I can, but I'm really waiting to get that material in to make sure that glass can stay in place. And then I can throw the door panels on the driver and passenger door. But one thing I've learned in this life is don't let what you can't do stop you from what you can do. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually put the new weather stripping along the edge of the passenger door. I've already done everything on the driver's side. So while I'm waiting for those parts, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the passenger side. You, uh, you guys are wondering if Texas is hot. The answer is always, always hot. All right, guys, day five, six, seven, eight. I'm not really sure, but like I promised you, some YouTube magic. I'm gonna show you, got the passenger door all buttoned up, got the button where it needs to go, got the panel on. And the only thing I didn't do was actually put in the lower panel because it's dry rotted and you can find a new one on LMC truck. So eventually I'll replace that. I want to find some speakers for that door first before I actually put that lower piece of the panel in because I want to bump some tunes in this bad boy, all right? Now, the other thing I want to point out is this door panel is in much worse condition than the driver door panel. The driver door panel is actually still very black and rich, but if I can find some new old school or NOS um, parts, I would actually really love to put some new door panels on this thing because you can buy the bottom portion, but I have yet to find 1980 and below upper door panel portions. Okay. Timing light here. That's because I was attempting to time the Ram charger. Um, I found it much easier to just time it by gut feeling and ear feeling than trying to get the timing marks. Now what I found online was 10 to 12 degrees, anywhere between eight to 12 degrees below top dead center. Um, so I got it right about 10 degrees. Now my other problem is that driveline vibration that I mentioned. I was able to drive it earlier and guess what? It still vibrated. I remember last time when I said that dad was diagnosing it and what he found was that U joints were bad. Did replace those. Vibration is still there. And when I say vibration, I mean the entire truck shakes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
So then I read online in one of the Ram Charger Trail Duster pages that you need the rear shims with the Rough Country 4 inch lift, which voila, that's what we have here. And one guy mentioned that he said it might sound backwards, but you want the fat end to um, be pointed towards the back. So I crawled underneath the truck, and of course, the fat end was towards the front. So I jacked it up, I switched the shims around, and hopefully that takes care of some of that vibration. Here we go. All right, go. Alright, so started up pretty quick. It's been cooling off for about two hours because I was reading about the driveline vibration. Boy, that 318 sounds angry, doesn't it? Alright. Put it in gear. Parking brake off. Yeah. This thing is so damn big. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's see. You wouldn't believe it. It's actually a lot better, but I think I may need some bigger shims. Oh, shut off. <laughs> We're still not tuned quite right. Come on, baby. Yeah. All right, let's go. So the timing may be too retarded because it keeps backfiring when I get on it. So I, I definitely feel, yeah, this thing is still vibrating. Like it needs bigger shims in the rear. I need to clean this windshield off better too. This, no, she died again, brother. <laughs> All right, we're just kind of coasting right now. <laughs> This thing is so badass. Oh, it feels good to drive it. All right. Reminds me of when I first was trying to get the Jeep running. I figured that out, so we can figure this out too. There you go, bad boy. All right, since I'm next to my house, I'm gonna pull up. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up to my house. I was gonna stop and uh, advance the distributor just a little more. Okay, I think this whole vibration issue has everything to do with um, the drive shaft angles. Because just switching those around, it was a lot better, but it's not perfect. Dude, when you have a vehicle that you drive that makes you smile like this, <laughs> I'm excited. I just gotta, fuck, I just gotta finish it. Man, I'm not gonna lie though. I'm pretty, I'm pretty whooped. I am pretty whooped. All right, let's go ahead and throw this bad motherfucker right here. Don't die on me, don't die on me, man, Charger. Don't die on me. Bam. She's behaving. I'll turn her off. If she doesn't turn on, then I'm, then I'm screwed. But honestly, be real. I forgot to show you guys the fruits of my labor. Let's, uh, Brian, what did I do with the keys? Is that in my pocket already? I'm already getting to that point now. Oh, they are in my pocket. Look at that. It's just, it's just really hot. All right. All right, check this out. Check this out. 1980 Ram Charger with power. 
windows. Boom, look at that. And right back down. Dude, can't make it up. That's some good stuff. I am still waiting for the package for this window for the track to put that window sealer in there so it'll actually stay on the track when the window goes up and down. Let me just make sure that's the problem. Yeah, that's 100% just the problem because it's, it's in its track, it's in its home. Um, and once that's done, I can go ahead and throw this door panel on, which is in much nicer shape than that door panel. And then kind of the same thing, uh, gonna try and source some speakers so we can jam some tunes in this bad boy. But other than that, I think it's gonna wrap up today's video. Yeah, she starts up good. She just needs that carb tune. I'm gonna have to get a holly or something. No. Oh shit. <laughs> get my hat. Of course, I don't have any rags on me. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Chase Elliott hat saves the day. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. It's been about two weeks of some severe hard work getting this thing up running. As you can see, it drives. Still got that driveline vibration. Pretty sure, again, it's just um, need to do some, some shims in the front axle, rear axle to get this bad boy running nice and smooth. Um, I also need to figure out what's going on with these this oil pressure gauge that's not doing anything. Fuel, pretty sure it's just a ground. Temperature gauge wants to work. Temperature gauge is working, um, ammeter gauge is working. Um, so yeah, just gonna go ahead and replace all these fuses with new ones, uh, the ones that are in there are old. Keep cleaning this interior up, get this driver door done, and hopefully by the next time you guys see the Ram Charger, it's actually driving smooth and I can drive it more than 10 feet without it shutting off. Oh, and that leaking heater, heater valve. So yeah, just a few small things to take care of. And once I'm done with that, we'll start knocking out some of the bigger stuff that includes a new windshield. This one's disgusting. I've tried cleaning it already. It's just old. And uh, some upholstery in here. And fun fact, I do want to keep this plaid black and white theme going. And as you can tell, the driver and passenger seat are pretty much shot, but the rear seat is in like great shape. So I'm going to use that as a template. I actually might change it up just a little bit um, to give it a more modern touch. I really like the plaid that's in the Volkswagens, but again, keep it like this, but maybe add a couple little white stripes or something like that. And a headliner. You guys can't tell, but I'm dripping. Actually, you might be able to tell. I'm actually, I'm dripping sweat. It's freaking hot here in Texas. It needs a headliner. The AC does actually work. Again, I think the fuse is, is gone. Let's see. Yeah. Again, I need to replace those fuses. I just, I popped too many of them, but the blower motor does work. Um, but yeah, anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you love these Ram Charger videos, don't forget to check out the series so you can see everything I've done over the last couple of years. Here recently, I've really been doubling down on getting this thing done because it's just been entirely too long and I want to use this vehicle. Um, next up, we'll probably be driving the Jeep around some more adventures and I'll be getting ready for another drift day with the Drift Mustang. So guys, you know what to do. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace out.